Katie will be here. Uh, the we'll let the room continue to populate for a minute. Don't hesitate. Hit in the chat. Let us know where you're tuning in from as well. Uh, as you probably overheard me telling Paul. Uh, by the way, we do have a special guest. Please welcome uh, Paul Dewey. Paul Dewey's a member of the President's Club and has been a high-level achiever in um, the network marketing space uh, for a couple of decades now. Glad to be here. Everyone. Prince Albert Saskatchewan, welcome. Prince Albert Saskatchewan, that's incredible. South Africa, Victoria, nice. Hey, Dion. Most likely Prince Albert is one of mine. <laughs> a lot of good-looking people in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. So we, we like to say hi to everyone on a first-name basis. To start the call, that's 1,000 people today. It's more than usual, Paul, so you can get started right now. All right. Hello, Lee. <laughs> Hello, Thomas. Hello, Lee. Hello, Sandra. Do we have a couple of Tonys? Uh, Graham Freeman, welcome here. This is like uh, Romper Room back in the day when... Uh, that's it. You're going to hold a mirror up. <laughs> it just be the open bit. And I see. Hey, hey, welcome, Nick. So Nick's here. Uh, Margaret's here from New Zealand. And I see um, Frederick. Welcome, and I Cyprus. Nice. Listen, we're Atlanta. obviously not going to name say hi to everyone uh, uh, by name because that would take yeah. what, ten minutes and not accomplish a whole hell of a lot. But uh, we're thinking of you, um, yeah. and we hope you're well. So, uh, listen, my mom always, I remember uh, whenever I'd be wounded as a kid and it was time to pull a bandage off and, and, and give a wound some air, she, and all little kids try to do it very slowly and gently so they don't hurt themselves. And then your mom just grabs it and rips it off. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, at that age, you don't know any profanity because if you did, you'd be screaming at your mom and you'd be grounded for a month. Um, so uh, I'm going to do that right now uh, because I don't have debit card uh, or BTC payment updates uh, like I would normally have in this particular call. Uh, so I just thought I'd pull the bandage off right from the very beginning for you. That doesn't mean I'm not going to have them. I just don't have them today. Uh, now, uh, I will tell you one of the things. Thanks, Dion Ouch. I appreciate it. It's a little bit of empathy for everyone. Uh, so uh, I will tell you what uh, I do want to share with you, though, because there is still there are still constructive and important things for us to discuss. And um, one of those things is that a timeline was established by Edwin and Waskar uh, in 1990. Apologies, uh, 2019. And, uh, and that timeline had to do with the launch of uh, the first the first phase of this company. Uh, and then, of course, uh, it had an awful lot to do with the rollout of the second phase, which is, thank you very much, Bill. That's very kind. Uh, the this, this second phase, of course, which would be uh, a compliant and regulated phase of the company so that not only can they expand um, – to larger and larger markets globally, but all of you can be endorsing something publicly that um, not only can you be proud of, uh, but also you can have the personal assurance as someone who's marketing something that you're not gonna steer any of your friends the wrong way. Um, since we've had, let's just say this uh, temporary break, um, with phase two uh, not launching yet and the challenges on the debit card solution for phase one, uh, I think pretty much everyone is is following this the, the basic instructions where they're not really doing any marketing yet. They've gone into a bit of a holding pattern. And, and for some of you, um, you're okay with, with uh, giving things a few weeks uh, until we have our bridge platform launch. And that's really what I want to talk about today. But some of you are not able to do that, or perhaps you just get uh, too itchy and, and you need to be marketing something. And so you, you, you're pitching another project as well. And you're absolutely entitled to do that. That's entirely uh, your prerogative. Uh, I can tell you that I get pitched an awful lot of projects. And as you can imagine, um, I get added to a lot of groups in Telegram. I probably leave two or three or four groups daily. Um, and I just wanted to explain my thought process as to why I take the action that I do. Paul, I know that you follow as a, as a leader with a large team, sort of the same approach. Um, when we commit to something, <clears throat> we, uh, we're, we're, 
we're fully committed to that thing uh, until a time comes that it's no longer appropriate to be fully committed to that thing. And um, uh, that time has certainly not come from my perspective uh, here yet. And so um, what I'm really looking forward to, uh, well, the number one thing I'm looking forward to, of course, is CFX having whatever crypto solution go live uh, or completed so they can push out what's owed to all the members of the company. That's the number one thing I'm looking forward to. I think number two in the order of importance for me would be see that debit card solution uh, roll out um, I know a, wor- a lot of work is being done behind the scenes. Many of you have sent me messages over the course of this particular week saying that you were waiting until some of the madness had died down until you go to the Bit- Bull and Bear site and register yourself. And it was seamless and painless and it, was, it only took moments. And that's great news. I know that, like I said before, they're working hard behind the scenes to make sure that that works exactly as it's supposed to. But number two for me would be that card solution rolling out to all members. That's obviously multiple hundreds of thousands of members. The reason for that is that the vast majority of members are probably owed hundreds or two or three or four or $5,000 uh, from CFX. And that card solution is going to be more than adequate for them to all get paid in full. And, and um, all of all of us, the most important thing for me uh, is that the field gets paid in its entirety because um, that gives us, uh, the most solid foundation for which to build upon. And um, we make commitments uh, of our time and our energy uh, to a company and they make commitments to us. And of course, companies, they need to follow through on those commitments to us um, for us to feel confident continuing to back and endorse uh, a particular company. And that certainly is the case here as well. Um, so, those two items, BTC payouts and then card solutions, those are of my highest priority for the field. Um, as far as any time I'm speaking to corporate and asking for updates, it's always about those two things, number one and two first. Then number three, <clears throat> and this is what I wanted to talk about today, uh, and I'm going to operate under the assumption that the company is going to do what it's supposed to do, uh, get those cards live and get those BTC um uh, get those BTC payments pushed out to the field. Uh, I noticed in the drop down menu for many of you, uh, one of the, um, uh, the on the list, whether you're grandfathered, for example, into P2C or uh, one of them is do you have a withdraw Gen 6 withdrawn or not Gen 6 apologies, but January 2022 withdrawal that's pending. Um, so I'm hoping that that means that we're going to see all of January pushed out sooner rather than later. Uh, and now, what I'd like to focus on is the reason that I'm looking forward to P2C, the phase two bridge, uh, bridge from what we've been doing for the last three years to the phase two, um, is because I've been watching Edwin and the trading team work on their algorithms for 36 months, maybe not quite that long. It's where, no, in August. Yeah, it's been 36 months now. And I know that many of you have been watching very carefully as well, uh, knowing, of course, they're trading larger and larger sums of money. And when you trade larger sums of money, you start to see those daily returns drop and we're seeing those things drop. But uh, remember, when we roll into phase two and all of you have your own brokerage account and you're able to benefit from daily compounding, um, you're going to see a big boost uh, in your numbers uh, as far as trade results go. Uh, Also, for those of you who are in any of the beta groups, uh, when you see some of those daily trade results uh, that are shown in video format, uh, obviously you're not allowed to share those. You're in a private beta testing group, but you see some of the results that the guys are pulling out of the algorithms that we're going to be able to benefit from, from phase two. Um, then it just instills a lot of confidence for me in their ability to continue to perform. And you've heard me say before, uh, performing consistently in the Forex space is the hardest thing in the world to do. Um, and so the fact that these guys have been able to do what they've been able to do just really gives me confidence that we are going to have something that we can back that's going to continue to perform into the future for us. Um, 
when I was speaking with Waskar, um, their intentions, of course, are to have a platform uh, for years to come. And so that's why uh, they're spending the sums of money that they're spending to make sure that um, uh, that company is structured in a way that uh, uh, we can all confidently endorse it, uh, regardless of where we live, regardless. So even if we're in those very challenging markets in the U.S. and Canada, then we'll finally be able to endorse an automated Forex platform that has some staying power. And remember, a big part of that staying power also has to do with how does the company access liquidity? So how can it trade um, $100 million? How can it trade a billion? How can it trade $10 billion? Um, because um, MT4, MT5, use going through um, uh, brokers, uh, there's just too many barriers to entry using a copy trading model where um, everyone is trading the same signals together that won't work for the number of members that are probably going to be attracted to this platform. And the fact that they have solutions for all of those things, um, I I think is, uh, uh, well, it's probably the hardest thing to do and the thing that I'm most excited about. Um, So when it comes to P2C, uh, this bridge between phase two and where we're at right now, one of the one of the key talking points that we we were discussing more than a month ago when the president's club was talking about a bridge uh was that uh the bridge is only going to be as good as the value that it provides members and so um if the value is there then it's something that we'll be able to get behind members will be able to put some cash in their pockets um some of you will put a lot of money in your pockets when you see the value that's here and uh, I, I just wanted to t- touch on the fact that for a second um, that the value is absolutely there. I can tell you it's hours and hours and hours of high value content um, in hundreds of videos, not dozens of videos uh, in, in multiple phases. Uh, there's no rank requirements for you to earn from all 10 levels of the unit level. I'm not sharing anything new with you. Oscar has already mentioned this. <laughs> Uh, so um, the this is absolutely key because uh, Waskar and Edwin, again, wanted to make sure that they pushed out as much money to the field during this bridge process as they possibly could. And one of the best ways to do that is to make sure that there are no barriers to entry. So there's no rank requirements. You are automatically going to earn to 10 levels. But on top of that, they're going to build a compression model in. Well, it's already actually built compression model into those 10 levels as well. So very simply what that means is if you, for example, have 20 levels of growth in your current UTA level, and let's say half of those people choose to opt into P2C, well, that would fill up all 10 levels of the P2C UTA level because it's automatically going to compress. And one of the things it's going to do to recognize uh, is when someone decides to click on the option, the email that goes out to them and opt into the system. Now, obviously, if you are a bull, if you've sponsored a minimum of one person, uh, then you'll be grandfathered into this. But um, where where I'm most excited is all of our friends, and I have some friends as well that got involved in CFX simply as customers. They had no interest in, in ever sharing CFX with anyone else. They've never shared anything with anyone else. They're not comfortable doing it. Um, I think that P2C is maybe going to provide as much or more value to those individuals. And and the reason is the curriculum that I'm talking about is specifically focused on how one can share uh, a project with others and not feel uh, um, awkward or not feel inadequate or not, not be embarrassed uh, or not feel like they're being a burden. Um, this is one of the biggest challenges for individuals that are getting involved in the home-based business space. And I think it's important to, to create uh, and to share curriculum that can really level the playing field because one of the simplest, uh, quickest, and easiest ways for anyone to add a significant second income to their household is in the network marketing space. Uh, there's a lot of criticism of the network marketing space, but the reality is that in a very simple and effective way, people can learn how to leverage themselves. And even even something as simple as two friends you share with two friends share with two friends, and the growth uh, that that um, that can come from that 
the additional income that can come from that in, in an incredibly short period of time is really difficult to match in any other space. If you're learning, for example, to do drop ships, you know, on Amazon, or you're learning, you're learning arbitrage between Amazon and eBay, there's so much work that goes in behind the scenes for you to develop a skill set to be familiar with Amazon, to familiar with eBay or familiar with Shopify, pick your products and start drop shipping. Uh, and listen, a lot of people are making a lot of money in spaces like that and a hundred other things that you can be doing online. What I'm simply saying is the fastest and easiest way to put money in your pocket is in a very simple leverage based environment that can come from a project that specifically P2C is going to, I think, offer very inexpensive entry point, $150. And so I will certainly be sharing it with uh, Bear members uh, and challenging some of my friends uh, to start going through some of this curriculum and put themselves in a position so that when phase two goes live, they now have the skill set, they understand what phase two is all about, and they can best maximize all of the phase two profit centers by also learning how to start sharing uh, that project preemptively through sharing P2C. So someone just asked in the chat, for example, will our ge genealogies get copied across? John just asked that, and the answer is yes. Uh, so what's gonna happen at the launch of this is our existing genealogy will be moved into the P2C uh, environment. That's an entirely separate back office, an entirely separate learning management system, an entirely separate ecosystem where you can track all of your growth, track all of your earnings. Uh, it's gamified. It's going to be an awful lot of fun. And then as during this bridge, or however long this bridge period is, this P2C bridge period, obviously for many of you, your genealogies are going to grow. And so when phase two is ready to go live, then they're simply going to take a copy of that growth, that growing uh, genealogy, and then move that into phase two. And so members will have the option to opt into phase two. It'll be that simple. So uh, the fact that we're going to have an inexpensive uh, but potentially highly profitable option over the course of the summer and into the early autumn uh, as we prepare for the phase two to roll out, I think is going to certainly assist a lot of people between the debit card rollout for member for our bear members that some bear members for example only got involved a year ago and perhaps have never made a withdrawal i think the debit card solution is going to be ideal for them making sure that they can cash out and uh, they're walking away from phase one is a positive and profitable experience and then for all of us who built genealogies during phase one uh, to give us a project to focus on that's going to put cash in our pockets uh, until phase two goes live. Uh, this is really uh, where I see this bridge. And this is why I think that things like, for example, BTC withdraws twice a week in phase two. We'll get into more specifics as to how they're going to be able to do that, um, where they're not uh, currently able to do it with, uh, with uh, CFX. Uh, you'll get answers to all of those questions because I know that's going to trigger questions, uh, how you'll be able to track your genealogy, uh, how you're going to be able to uh, eventually use your physical debit card on P2C as well, and also on phase two as well. So all of those things, they're going to have more information for. Uh, I know debit card, we were expecting to see testing during this first week in August. That's what I was told. I believe that's happening. And right around the corner after that testing is complete is starting to push out high numbers of cards. Um, so uh, Martha just asked uh, during this bridge, is phase one? Yeah, phase one is still going to be active. You'll still be generating trading results. Edwin and the team are still going to be doing their thing. And then you'll be using your card solution uh, to pull uh, gains out. Now, um, Paul, uh, yeah. anything you'd like to share in regards to what we've been talking about or anything else? You, you know, it's uh, it was interesting. Uh, we, John and I, we had a... A phenomenal conversation uh, with a developer um, in the in the space of network marketing and some of the technologies that are being used, including uh, gamification, which uh, which John touched on briefly, where which is basically the the idea where you uh, are rewarded for actually participating in things in uh, in the back office, be it watching videos, be it actually um, reaching out to people, and some of the way the technologies that we're going to be able to use to share. Uh, what we're doing uh, in cash effects and P2C and phase two in the future uh, are going to be absolutely exhilarating to watch. And it's just uh, it's just neat how the industry of network marketing has evolved 
um, in the uh, almost 30 years that I've been involved to, to now where the point is the, the concept of social selling or social marketing is so much easier to do. And, and the things that we were able to do to create back offices, to create these platforms where we can do this gamification, we couldn't do these things even, even five or six years ago. So the technology is ripe for what we want to do as an entity uh, to be able to have uh, this incredible education option. Um, it's, it's like night and day. And, and some of the conversations that I've had, I've had with Wasco over the past couple of weeks, um, talking about the future, and, and we've talked a little bit about events that we're going to be having in the future. We do truly want to become an events company once this whole uh, pandemic thing uh, really totally solves itself. And I'm looking forward to, uh, to participating in that because that's, uh, as the owner of a production company, that's the kinds of things that I love to do. And getting together, because there's a, there's a thousand really good-looking people on this call, the ones that I can see at least. Uh, so to be able to get together and hug it out in the future with all of you guys is going to be absolutely in incredible. Especially with Shakespeare there, man. That guy is here all the time. It's really fantastic. Uh, yes. Thanks, Paul. Uh, and again, just uh, I have had the opportunity for the past few years to work together with my family on this uh, platform, and and so excited to see that there's uh, there's great great things planned for us in the future. And I realize that this has been a tough challenge. It's been a challenge for all of us, uh, but uh, the best is definitely yet to come. So, thanks for the opportunity to share, John. Yeah, you bet. Thanks, buddy. Thanks very much. Uh, a couple of uh, notes that were coming in, uh, comments. Hey, Rebecca, good to see you. Uh, so one uh, one thing I want to – now, Lincoln just asked why the money in the trading pool is lower. Um, so some of your traders are obviously already aware that as you start trading larger and larger sums of money, one of the things that has to happen is your risk management strategies have to change. You have to be more and more careful. Um and uh, John Lofstoff has talked about some of those things. Uh, he talked about talked about it on the cruise. He talked about it in I think there was a live event that was happening in I think it was in Kirkau, a uh, big event that happened not long ago. I think also in, Should that one in? in Barbados or yeah. I, I can't remember where it was, but uh, uh, I talked uh, talked a lot about um, uh, um, we talked a lot about uh, trading. Um, securely, safely, and uh, some of the strategies that they use, how they're getting out of the market more quickly. Uh, so all of these things definitely contribute to slowly uh, over time those trade results going down on a daily basis. Uh, it doesn't have to be the case. Uh, we know, for example, the AI is performing uh, at a much, much higher clip than um, the EAs have been recently. But as I said before, when we get into you all having your own brokerage accounts, uh, and you're also able to benefit from daily compounding. That's, I think, when you're going to start to see your monthly numbers uh, start to increase again as well. Now, a couple other points that I, I from questions or comments that were being made. Uh, one of them was rankings. Uh, <clears throat> there is no ranking uh, requirements other than accessing uh, the entire product catalog. Uh, and that's going to be done through the cycle system that Waskar has talked about. You'll learn more about that very soon. That's for P2C. And then in phase two, absolutely, your ranks are, are there are still going to be ranks and there are still going to be rank pool prizes and, and all of the benefits that go along with hitting ranks in phase two. Uh, the other thing is, uh, Graham had asked, what are we going to be sharing regarding P2C? Um, you, you'll have all of the same tools that you have grown accustomed to with uh, with CFX. So you'll have your own PowerPoint. In fact, you're gonna have a very, very detailed uh, PDF document that gets right into um, all of this content and the types of things one can learn by accessing and going through this content, uh, the type of professionals that have been building out this content. By the way, um, uh, you know, there are obviously individuals online you can find courses on just about anything um and in most cases the curriculum that you're per perhaps going to pay for or courses that you're going to buy are not necessarily experts in the field that have already become accomplished in doing what they're attempting to sell um that's not the case here uh these are these are master marketers and educators that have put this stuff together and they've built they've built platforms um uh where their customers, their their students, have gone on to make millions and tens of millions and even 
be on a hundred million dollars um, marketing online. So there's some incredible stuff that's going to be available to all of us very soon. Uh, and you'll see PowerPoints, you'll see uh, detailed PDF documents about that curriculum. Uh, you'll also probably see a website fairly quickly once we go live, similar to CFX Success from Home. So um, uh, it becomes very, very easy for you then to uh, not only to get involved, to align yourself, to start um, uh, going through the, the curriculum, but also uh, find it easy to share as well. So uh, I, I, now I apologize that we took so long, it's 29 minutes after the hour, and not actually have a BTC or a card update for you. I apologize for that. I did, I did address that. That was the very first thing I addressed uh, 25 minutes ago. Uh, but... Uh, there are things certainly to be enthusiastic about. There's always things to be enthusiastic about, of course. Uh, and um, I suspect that we're going to have uh, be loading um, executives and above into P2C as a test. Uh, and that's going to be, I think, happening very shortly. And then all other members are going to have the opportunity then to click a button and opt in. Wherever you happen to be in your genealogy now is where you will be in there. And so um, uh, if you already have a genealogy in CFX and those people choose to click a button and opt in in uh, P2C, they will automatically be there. There's nothing for you to worry about and there's nothing for you to do. So I think what we'll do is we'll wrap up there. Paul, Andrew, anything that you want to you wanna share? Well, just, uh, I've had loads of questions for the P2C. John, I'm sure you're going to do a full presentation, aren't you, and everything before it launches or something. I'm sure you'll be doing something more in depth, will you, when it, before it launches? Yeah, you know, what what we'll do is um, we'll start bi-weekly presentations. Probably, uh, we might even do we might even have some fun with it and do some BTC giveaways. And we're just going to get right back to you know our old uh, regular presentation dimes and have some contests and give a bunch of money away. Uh, the kind of stuff that we had a lot of fun doing in the early early days of of building out CFX. We'll get right back to that. Um, so. I will let you know the moment I know uh, that, well, you're all going to hear anyway, when we start loading in for our testing, executives, there's a, I mean, there's 3,000 executives that are going to be letting everyone know that they just got pulled in for a test. Uh, but again, remember, it's, it's your genealogy is intact. So, for example, if you're not an executive, but there's an executive below you, um, you're still going to be above that executive when you click the P2C. The database is staying the database. Don't worry about that. The genealogical order is staying that order. Yes, definitely ended in August. He was asking in August for sure, in August. Uh, ASAP. So it's going to be as soon as is humanly possible uh, to get everyone loaded in there so we can start hustling um, and having a little bit of fun and giving some money away and you know helping people uh that uh, need to put some cash back in their pockets before school starts for their kids etc so that's going to certainly be our focus for the second half of the summer uh with that yeah i might cards in august I, I i've never heard anything to the different um so i would have to say yeah i don't see why we won't have that happen but you know if i learn anything different i'll let you know right away so um with that i want to thank all of you very much for taking the time to be here uh, I hope you have an excellent weekend. I wish I had more details for you, but there are definitely more details coming. So uh, the moment we're able to share them, we'll share them. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, guys. Cheers now. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye.